What's up? I'm B, and whether you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to the podcast, I hope you're having an amazing day. Today's going to be interesting. So we'll start out with tell me your win. I want to hear your win for the week, and um, I will share mine. And then we are going to watch an Instagram live between Morgan Oliggs from Paul and Morgan and Bethany Beal of Girl Defined. They got together virtually and talked about intimacy, sexuality. I don't know, but I saw the little like uh, preview for not the video itself, but how you can put like an individualized thumbnail and it mentioned pole dancing and it was called like sexy time chat. So we're going to watch it. I I am watching it for the first time right here, right now. And it's a long one. So this video might end up getting split into two parts, but we'll just have to see how quickly we move through things. I am genuinely going to try to watch this without snarking. I am sure that I will make a joke here and there. However, I have talked multiple times about how um, like sexuality and consent and uh, the complexity of intimate relationships are really important topics to me, especially as a Christian and someone who grew up very involved in a Christian church because I feel like in a lot of cases, this isn't with all churches, but in a lot of cases, those kinds of topics are not handled very well. And so while I think I might hear quite a few ridiculous things in the conversation between Bethany and Morgan, I I want to watch this and respond with my sincere thoughts. So that is what we are going to do. Before we get into the reaction, I want to hear your win for the week. Again, this is something that happened within the past week, whether it's big or small, that just made you feel happy or grateful or brought a smile to your face, whatever it may be. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you leave yours in the comment section down below because I loved hearing all of the wins that were left in the comment section last week. Mine for this week is a pretty cool one, I think. My dad really likes golf and every year in February, the Waste Management Phoenix Open comes to Arizona and we try to go whenever we can. And uh, it's it's a really good time. It's really fun. The Waste Management Open is unlike any other golf tournament. It is super exciting, super fun to go to. Um, the majority of the course is like a typical golf tournament. It's quiet, like very prim, very proper, but they do have bars and, you know, food stands and other things all around the course that are really fun and there is the 16th hole which if you've ever been there you know it's amazing you are like allowed to heckle the golfers which it's just fun to do it's all lighthearted. it's all a good time and so um last year i got club tickets for the first time for my dad and i and it was open bar all day unlimited food we had lounge areas it was amazing and this year because of some scheduling stuff, it didn't look like we were going to be able to go to do that. But my husband, without me knowing, took it upon himself to organize specific things in order to allow my dad and I to go to this tournament. And he got us tickets. He got us the 1937 club tickets. He picked. He went and drove across town early in the morning to pick my dad up and drop us off at the tournament. And then he came and picked us up at the end of the day and we went and we watched the Super Bowl and it was just so fun. So um, Rick doing that for me and my dad, like taking it upon himself to organize this and get everything all together and get the tickets and plan an amazing surprise. That was amazing. But then also to be able to spend that time with my dad and have just quality one-on-one time with the two of us. It's right around his birthday. So that was his birthday gift. And just to be able to celebrate him and do something really fun and meaningful and special for him and to spend that time with him was amazing. Now, without any further ado, let's move on to this Instagram live. It was on Morgan Oleg's uh, Instagram and then Bethany Beal joined. And it, it's, it's a sexy time chat. I don't know what to expect, but let's just dive right in. Ah! We're live. <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm going to give a few moments for people to join. 
Hey, everybody. I'm so excited for this, you guys. And a little nervous, because it's just a little nerve-wracking to talk about this stuff, because it's so contra wait, contradict, no, not contradict, what am I trying to say? Con controversial, that's what I'm trying to say here. Hey, guys. It can be. Oh my goodness, welcome, welcome, everyone. I'm so excited to uh, talk about all this with you guys. Yes, this will be saved. Um, uh, <laughs> ben Joseph says, what am I in here for? Great question. Um, all right, let's see here. All right, Bethany is about to join. She said, great question and did not answer it. So we are just in anticipation right now. I've been on right on time. Like, wow, this is a big deal, you guys. Okay, is it letting me accept it? I don't know. Okay, there we go. Woohoo! <laughs> Look at us! We're so on time! <laughs> Here we go. I know, so Davey is about to leave. Dave's coming to pick him up. So if you hear, like, small noises in the background, that's that. <laughs> And then Audrey is sleeping right here, but she may wake up at some point and I'll just be like nursing her underneath this. So. Amazing. Because you are super woman and that is how we do it. <laughs> you just, you know, you got to do what you got to do. I love it. Where, oh, where is Luca right now? Um, He is downstairs with Paul. So okay. yeah. The dad is this seems like such a bizarre pairing. I know I said I was going to try to like listen to the advice and whatever it genuinely is that they're talking about. But this is like a bizarre matchup that I would not have expected. When Paul and Morgan started hanging out with Nate and Sutton, I was like, okay, you know, that kind of makes sense. I can see that. This to me just feels very odd. I wonder how they got connected. I wonder like what made them decide to do this together. And also, I'm so interested in the dynamics of how Girl Defined has been moving as of the past like year and a half-ish or so, because it seems very much like things are separating. And I know that uh, Kristen adopted two boys. And so that is such a huge adjustment and I'm not super surprised that she's not doing um, as much as she used to with Girl Defined Ministries. But like, it's just, it's just an interesting thing to witness happening. And also, you know what? I, I'm not even going to get started on this tangent, but like all of the side pieces that Bethany has, it feels like she is just cooking up a pot of mismatched spaghettis uh, in terms of business ventures, throwing them at the wall and seeing what sticks. And so far, I feel like she hasn't found that thing that's going to stick yet. Her, she works smart business. I mean, she's still going hard on it, but the messaging is so mixed. It's so confusing. At one point she was talking about how it's like, oh, just a side hustle to, you know, help you contribute to the household and, you know, you can be a stay-at-home mom and you can still make money. And then she recently did a reel where she was like, I can teach you how to create one course that'll help you replace your husband's monthly income. And I'm like, what? Where did, where did that come from? One. And two, isn't that contradictory to what so many different traditional Christian women teach like they're supposed to they're saying that men are supposed to be the heads of the household they're the ones who work so you can be a stay-at-home mom and now you're supposed to like usurp him and earning power it's a lot I am not going to get distracted by that though back to this Holding the floor oh. down. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's like at this stage now almost five months oh. that if I tried to involve him in this, it would just be pure chaos. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what it is with this munchkin. And that's oh, why he's heading out. <laughs> Not here. Can you say hi to everyone? <laughs> These wonderful children are the result of, you know, what we're going to be talking about. So it's great. Oh, <laughs> exactly. uh, we're going to come get you. And mommy's going to talk to Miss Morgan, okay? 
<laughs> Look at this. We have quite a group joining. Miss Morgan. That's so churchy. I do that though. That's so funny. Calling her Miss Morgan is something that like resonates internally with me because even when we had uh, monks and beans when we were doing kinship foster care I would introduce adults that were not familial to them as miss or mister and so I'm just like I'm with you on that one Bethany I don't know I think it's just a force of habit something that I don't even think about you just call adults like miss or mister or missus whether it's their first name or their last name that's just like what I was raised with and so that's what I do yes People I know. are excited. Mommy, I mean, mommy, who mommy. wouldn't be excited about talking about this, right? <laughs> I'm very excited. Davy's actually mommy, just mommy, in, so we are. All right, here goes the toddler. <laughs> this will not work. <laughs> this will not work with that in the house. Okay. Oh, goodness, I love it. Um, okay, well, I feel like we should just jump right into things, but first I want to say a little prayer. I feel like that's good. I love how Francie starts off all of her podcasts with prayer. I think that's just so wise, and so I'm going to just say a little prayer for this conversation. Okay, first and foremost, I just have to address this real quick. I'm so sorry because this is completely off topic, but it's going to bug me if I don't say anything. I am recording this at 12 38 a.m because this is literally the only time that i have to record this in order to get it up next week so it's late my, i've been up all day my eyes are at the point where they're so tired that they're like squinty and watery and so if i'm making like a stink face but it's just with my eyes and you're watching this and you're like wondering what i'm thinking I'm just processing the information. Like, I'm not thinking anything in particular. That's just how my face looks right now. Secondly, though, um, it's interesting to start this with a prayer. I noticed because I've been, like, catching up with Paul and Morgan a little bit lately. Not super in-depth, but just seeing if there's anything I want to talk about on the channel. And they did a video where they reacted to some of the things that Jen from Fundy Friday said about Morgan in the video that she did about them recently. And they started that video off with a prayer too. And I don't know how I feel about it. I understand, especially if you're making religious content, wanting to have an intention for the video or the episode and wanting to pray before you do it. That's totally something that like I understand that doesn't seem odd to me but doing it on camera is something that makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable I'm not quite sure why I'm trying to figure out what it is but it does feel a little bit showy and I think that's kind of the thing that immediately throws me off about it is like you don't have to do this in public like you don't have to do this on camera in front of everyone you could have done this privately before you started and then just gone into the video but she's gonna pray and we're just gonna keep it moving um heavenly father we just thank you so much for this opportunity to come together as sisters in christ and just um children of yours and talk about something so beautifully designed by you lord um and just Talk about what it looks like to be God honoring sexual human beings. Um, and I just pray that you would lead this conversation and uh, let there be fruit from it and just encourage and edify everyone who is here, including me and Bethany. And it's in your son's name that I pray this. Amen. Amen. It's just so fun. I, know. I am. <laughs> I know that we are gaining some followers because of this because people want to hear about it and then we're also losing some there are some people that are not happy that we're talking about this oh and they've let us know too <laughs> they've let us know that they're unfollowing us they can't just unfollow us peacefully they have to just let us know <laughs> oh my goodness uh Oh my goodness. Yes. I love it. Well, all right. So for those of you guys joining, maybe you don't know why we're having this conversation or what this conversation me. even is, but that's me. so I'll give a little background. I have seen you, Bethany post several times about Francie Winslow's podcast, heaven in your home. And I like hadn't, I don't know, like it was one of those stories that I just kind of like, oh, I need to check that out sometime and like had it. And finally yeah. I did last week and was like, <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. 
did. And so I was just so encouraged listening to Francie talk. And she, the episode, the first episode that I listened to is titled Becoming Sexually Adventurous Part Two with Dr. Glenn and Phyllis Hill. I have notes just FYI on this side. So if I keep looking that way, that's why. Um, but I was just listening to this podcast and it was so wild. Because, and sadly, it was so wild, yeah. because it's like these three okay. s- seemingly solid believers, um, I don't know them personally, but just from what I've seen on social media, from Francie, and just listening to her podcast, like, just, just seems like she's got a genuine walk with yeah. the Lord, and is going about this in such a God-honoring way, talking about sex, and what it is to be sexual in marriage, yeah. and whatnot, um, and so... I was just super thankful to listen to her podcast and hear them talking about this stuff. And I decided to post on Instagram one of the things that they mentioned, which was Phyllis, the lady that Francie was interviewing, mentioned that she had has a group of women at her church that she does or used to pour into like monthly. They would get together and hang out and go out to eat or do some fun things and she mentioned like that either they did or would do uh go to a pole dancing class like a private class Um. where all these ladies learned how to pole dance slash lap dance for their husbands assuming these were all married women whatever um and i posted about it and okay it was a little rambly to get to the spice but that is that's spicy. That's going to be interesting. I wonder how they feel about that. Asked if women would do this, and they were like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> "Oh my goodness!" So I had many responses, as I'm sure you can um, assume, and a lot of them were like, "Yes, I would totally try this out," and a lot of them were like, "Absolutely not." This- this is disgusting. This is so worldly. Why would you ever do anything like this? Um, and obviously, like, we're not about to buy a pole and bring it into our house. I mean, maybe some of you guys are. I don't know. <laughs> but so, so, like, the whole conversation really was about yeah. just, like, are you okay with becoming, like, sexy for your husband? And, like, it seemed like a lot of women were not okay with that. Why do you think that is <laughs> Uh, of re- like why mm-hmm. oh wait are you asking me yeah I'm asking you <laughs> it's someone else here. Like, who else could you be talking to you yeah it's interesting because like I listened to that episode too and I've been listening to Francie you know what Bethany does a lot of very cringy things but I genuinely appreciate how much she doesn't care like that she is being cringy or goofy or looking like an oddball. Like, I genuinely appreciate that about her. I have so many criticisms of the things that come out of her mouth and the things that she puts onto the internet. But that's one thing that I will, I'll give her. We met at a retreat like a year and a half ago, or I don't know when, like in the last year or two. And she's so awesome, so amazing. So I've gotten to meet her and a lot of her mentors, like personally at this retreat. And even the stuff she's been sharing, it is so like, I think the biggest reason that a lot of women struggle with this is because one, we've just come up with these ideas on our head that there are like certain things that are Christian and there are certain things that are not, which I, I, even when it comes to like lingerie, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, you'll give someone some lingerie or you'll, you know, share about it. And they're like, oh my gosh, that's just too much. And I'm like, too much. Like you're about to get naked. What are we talking about? You know? Um, or when it comes to certain moves or positions or this, like this whole idea of like pole dancing or learning how to lap dance or whatever. It's like, we've somehow come up with this box in our mind. Like, okay, this is good Christian sex. And then anything outside of that is no, that's evil. That's like of the double. That's like terrible, you know? Um, and so I think that we have to take a step back and say, okay, why do I have these ideas of what is okay and what is not okay? Why do I have this idea? Even things when it comes to like, um, you have people who have different opinions on like oral sex, you know? And it's like, well, why? Where did you come up with that idea? Like clearly not, and like there isn't an outline in scripture of like what is, yes, this is okay and no, this is not. We know like 
sex is to be reserved for the marriage bed. And then we see in Song of Solomon all sorts of adventurous stuff that you can interpret in a lot of different <gasps> oh, ways. Oh, oh. But for some reason, so much. <gasps> oh my God. Okay. This is completely unrelated. I was at the dentist the other day and the radio was playing and I heard a radio ad for Trinity Church and they're doing a series on Song of Solomon. Trinity Church, if you haven't watched my episodes on Mark Driscoll, it's his church. It's in Arizona. He, Mark Driscoll is a menace and just, ooh, ooh, so many problems with the things that he does and the way that he treats his congregants and his staff and all of that. I will, um, I'll link them in the pinned comment, my videos that I did about Mark in case you want to go watch them. But I heard it and they're like, it's, what is the series called? Let me see if I can find it. Okay. So it's called Real Romance, Sex in the Song of Songs. And Song of Songs and Song of Solomon are the same book in the Old Testament of the Bible. The author is unknown, but it's generally believed and accepted that Solomon wrote Song of Songs. And so um, just hearing that on the radio, I was like, I can't get away from him. I can't get away from Mark Driscoll. Also, this dude is a literal menace and uh, a misogynist. And I don't know what he has to say about real romance, but I am sure that it's quite interesting. Okay, back to this. Many of us have grown up with these really strict ideas. I was actually talking to um, a friend and she was saying that her mom mentioned specifically how, you know, like, okay, you can have fun in marriage, but don't have too much fun, you know? And so there's just this idea surrounding it. Like, okay, if you have too much fun, if you're too sexy, if you, if you incorporate too many of these things um, that are like kind of like really sexy, then now you've crossed the line and now you're having like worldly sex. And it's to me so sad because if we took a step back, back and asked ourselves the question, like, well, how did I come up this, with this idea? Why do I have these, like these notions of what's okay and what's not okay? I think we'd probably realize like, we're just pulling it out of thin air or pulling it out of like our ideas of what we think, you know? And that's, that's sad to me. So I'm really excited for us to talk and like, you know, like take a step, step back and really evaluate why we have these ideas of what's okay and what's not okay, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And yeah, it's like we have to really ask ourselves because, you know, I was getting some very strong opinions sent to me of like, absolutely not. You should not even be talking about this. Why are you sharing this on your platform? This is so worldly and gross. <laughs> you've gone down. You've become Satan. Like, And I'm just like, where did you get this from? Like, why, yeah. wh why are you so strongly against it? Can we really like figure that out? I think that's a really good point. Um, because, yeah, the Bible is just really more for having a fun yeah. time sexually with your husband than it is against it. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, and like, uh, yeah, a I mean, this will be like a small personal testimony. I mean, I, I haven't, I'm very tall. So for me, I'm imagining like pole dancing and I'm like, I'm like as tall as the roof practically already. So I'm not sure <laughs> how that would work out, but I want to have like some friends who are extremely positive about like sex and they've been in really respectful ways that so we've had great conversations even before I got married, like kind of helping me as I was becoming a married woman. And I really appreciate, I really appreciate that because I think that in some ways it's helped to, um, like it's helped me to realize like, it's okay to be like super sexy and to try to lean into that. But even, you know, over the past four years, especially listening to Francie's podcast and digging into other resources, um, just realizing how helpful it is for me as a woman, like going into times of intimacy or whatever, just the whole experience and the whole of what my body is able to do um, goes up like so much more. And I experience so much more pleasure in those times and have such a more like wonderful time when I really view myself as like, wow, I'm really sexy. I'm really erotic. Like I have a lot to bring. Um, and yeah. so we often think like lingerie or this pole dancing or whatever, it's going to be for him, but mm -hmm. I'm going to get laundry right in the middle of this, this point. Uh, but a lot of it is even for you because your body responds to this, like, wow, like you, you know, it kind of like gets everything going. And so I think yeah. women need to realize like the more you hold back sometimes, the more you're actually working yeah. against yourself. And if you're like, I struggle to achieve certain <laughs> things, then mm -hmm. this might be part of the problem. Okay, let me grab Audrey in. Okay. I think that 
this is a really good point coming from Bethany. Like, wow, this is a very good point. And I'm thinking of Lexi James and the post that she recently made on Instagram about how, you know, your husband didn't marry you to take walks and watch Netflix. He married you so he could have sex with you. And how that was just very much one-sided. It was like, what the spouse wants, what the husband wants, what is he looking for? When does he want sex? He gets sex whenever he wants it. And, you know, it's your wifely duty. Submit, submit, submit. And I know that Morgan and Bethany also have elements of this and believe in that kind of um, perspective to a certain degree. But I think it is really refreshing to hear Bethany say like, okay, yeah, people might think that you're like learning to be sexy, quote unquote, for him. But It can be a lot more fun and it can be very pleasurable if you feel good about yourself. And that's the point. Like having intercourse, you know, two people in this case, two people in a marriage having sex, it's supposed to be good for both of you. It is supposed to be fun for both of you. It should not feel like a chore. It should not feel like a duty. It should not feel like, okay, well, whatever he wants, like that's what I'm going to do. That's not healthy in my opinion. And of course, like everything I say, unless I like provide a source for it, or I'm like, according to X, Y, Z, this is the fact, like everything I say is my opinion, but I feel like it's generally accepted outside of religious spheres that sex should be enjoyable for all of the people who are involved in it. It should be fun. It should be a good time. And I don't know that we discuss that openly enough in these religious circles. I don't know that we encourage women to feel comfortable with what they're doing and to explore and to say like, well, this feels good to me when we do this. And this does not feel good to me when we do that. Like this position hurts me or you're going a little bit too fast or like like whatever it is. Like I don't think young Christian girls are encouraged to speak up for themselves when they enter into a marriage because it's just gone from everything's off limits to nothing's off limits. Be there, please your husband, do what he wants. So I appreciate that they're talking about this. I feel like I just gave Bethany a lot of praise in this regard and I hope she does not make me eat my words. Yes, yeah, I'm not going to right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, it's all good. Yeah, and I think that's really good. And, you know, there are some people in the chat who are mentioning like it's the church's fault or struggling so much. And I... I agree in the sense, I'm not going to say it's the church's fault. I think that it's such a hard topic, sadly. I don't know why it's a hard topic to talk about sex. I think it's balance of like, yes, sex with your husband, with your wife needs to be private in a lot of ways, but not so private that you literally never talk about it. And that's so, I I think we're afraid that if we talk about sex, we're going to lead people into stumbling or into temptation. And I get that. I and I agree that there has to be a balance, but we've gone, the church, I think, and a lot of people, Christians have gone so far to the other side of just not talking about it at all, that it's damaged people. I disagree with this. I don't think that religious people avoid talking about sex openly because they're afraid that they're going to make it sound so exciting that people are just going to like lose their minds and go buck wild on each other. Like, I don't think that's it. I think it's because of the example that is largely set by the church. Like the church is responsible for dictating its own culture and the people who attend that church and are members of that church will most of the time follow along. And so if the church or if leadership at the church is speaking about sex in a very vague kind of way, then people are going to follow. I think there's a lot of shame that is set up because it's more often than not talked about in a negative way and like the dangers of sex and the risk of sex and oh my gosh, the world is going to crumble and fall to pieces if you even think about having sex before you get married. But once you get married, Make sure you're ready, open, and available 24-7 like a Denny's, right? So I don't think that it's it's like, oh, we want to make sure that we don't get anybody too excited. I think it's that in general, a lot of Christian churches have created a culture of shame when it comes to speaking about sex, even within marriages. Like 
people don't want to get too detailed. People don't want to be open and and have fun with that topic because I've said this before, I think if you can control the way someone feels about their body, you have a much easier time controlling their mind where like as opposed to just trying to get into their brain. Like if you can make them feel like who they are is inherently shameful, you got a lot of power there. That's just my opinion though. Also, someone recently commented on one of my videos that um, they know more about Christianity than me, which is hilarious because I've branded myself as the ex-Christian millennial. I'm not an ex-Christian. I'm a Christian. I go to church. Like, I am involved in my church. I am a believer. I've, I'm not an ex-Christian. I, I am a millennial um, because of my age because of the year that I was born in. But as much as I criticize the church or or organized religion, the church is a very broad phrase. Um, But as much as I criticize organized religion or Christianity or certain Christian influencers, it's always coming from a place of wanting to make things better. It's not coming from a place of like, I hate organized religion and I'm an ex-Christian and so I want to tear everything down. That's not it. it. Like if if I was an ex-Christian and I didn't care about Christianity, I wouldn't be doing this. Like I wouldn't be spending my time at one o'clock in the morning talking about this and trying to have these conversations. I talk about it because I want things to get better. And even though I might be kind of harsh sometimes and it might sound like I'm harping on Christian churches or organized religions, it's always coming from a place of wanting to improve and make a positive change, not a place of trying to just be like a hater of the church. So I just, I want to put that out there. Well, and like we've forgotten to uh, talk about the freedom that sex is within marriage and the fun that it is and the beauty that it is. And so, yeah, like I pray that the church, that pastors, we, we find a way to talk about it in an honorable way, in a beneficial way, in an educational way um, without you know, stumble, causing people to stumble, obviously. It is hard. So before you, before you heard the podcast last week, if you had heard someone mention like, oh, going to a private class with some of your other married girlfriends and having like a female instructor, would you have been like shocked by that? Or what was your perspective before listening to Francie's podcast? Yeah, I think that I was in a place where like, if a friend had brought that up, I would have been like, what? Okay, let's do it. (laughs) Like, it's total lunatic, but let's go. (laughs) But, like, had you mentioned it maybe a few years ago, I think I would have been, like, I think I would have been embarrassed and, like, felt awkward because lack of confidence in, like, the sexual woman that I am allowed to be, like, or just not believing that I'm allowed to be that. Um, Yeah. And not believing that, like, like, it's not just for my husband. Like, it's for me, too. Yeah. Like, yes, my husband's going to love it and enjoy it very much. But, like, I'm allowed to love it and yeah. enjoy it, too. And I don't think that that was, like, a church thing that I, have like, was in, instilled in me. I think it was just, like, I don't really know. Honestly, I'll have to, like, break that down eventually. I won't do that here. But, um, yeah. yeah, I think just allowing myself to recognize that it's okay and beautiful and and fun and amazing to be a sexual woman (laughs) in my marriage yeah I don't know good for well what kind of I think yeah go ahead go ahead go ahead I you know and I'm sure you do too like anytime I talk about this on Instagram or I've written a book you know not it was more for single and married women but I'll get a lot of like DMs or just like conversations about this comments. And there is so much like struggle in the area of like sexual intimacy for couples. And um, it's so hard because even a few years ago, a friend and I, when we were both newly married, she was like, Oh, it would be so cool if I could find like a sex therapist, like me and my husband, just because this is such a beautiful area. And we're like, you know, we don't know everything and we have certain struggles or whatever. And she's like, but I don't even like, do you know a sex therapist? And I was like, I don't even know one, but I was like, that'd be really cool to actually see one. And it was just crazy because I'm like, it's so like, so behind the scenes. And so um, like, I don't know, you just pretend that sex is great. And then we'll talk about like, women should enjoy sex too. But we don't often talk about like, well, what if you aren't? And 
like, what if you don't even okay. enjoy it? Like, where do we even go? Yeah. I don't know. The whole conversation has just been so in the dark. And I feel like it's finally coming into the light that women and men now have the opportunity to maybe seek out some help or to actually say like, Hey, I want our sexual relationship to be really great. I want to really step into like my sexuality and be really erotic within my marriage and be like super, you know, there's like a place for that, like seduction and that beauty and that, like, you know, almost like that, all that flirting and kind of like temptation in there with your spouse. And it's like, I want that, but how do I even get there? So I think it's so important whether you agree with someone or not. I mean, be willing to have the conversation, you know, because if we just keep it like in the dark, then you might be like, yeah, I I see these, I see a few women talking about it, but sex is like a really miserable place for me. Like you have to enter into the conversation. You have to be willing to reach out and get some help. And I actually did post, um, I'll post it on my stories afterwards, but there is a sex therapist that I came across on Francie's podcast. She interviewed, um, her name's, uh, Tish and she, it's like, that like, that's probably one of the first sex therapists I've ever come across that like, I've heard Christians like openly share about. And it's just, it's like, man, like these resources should be more available. Like this conversation should be more upfront so that we can get to the place even where we feel confident being super sexy, you know, and be confident yeah. feeling, Hey, I could actually do something kind of wild and crazy just mm-hmm. with my husband and not feel so much shame or embarrassment about it. So I know we're all coming from different places. And I think it's important just to have that open mind and be willing to like figure out what are the steps I need to take to get to that place? Cause wouldn't it be so beautiful even in a few years, if you could get there, you know, like, yeah. and, and for me too, it's like, I don't, I haven't arrived. Like I've only been married four years. Like I'm sure in 10 years, I'll look back and be like, wow, I didn't know anything, you know? Um, <laughs> but it's like it's important that we keep having these conversations and keep taking steps forward or else we're just going to stay stuck right where we are. And I think there's so much excitement and beauty and fun to be had. Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree with the sentiment of this, but I would also like to add that wouldn't it be great if there was a culture of being more open about sex in religious spaces? And I feel like I keep adding that qualifier because we are specifically talking about religious spaces. And um, in this conversation in particular, they're talking about sex within a marriage. So that's kind of what I will be building on as well. But wouldn't it be great if, even if like the core belief is the same where, you know, the the generally gr- agreed upon belief is that sex is a sacred act to be done between husbands and wives. That's the belief that they're talking about. Let's, you know, build on this. Let's play on this. Even if that's the belief that people agree upon, wouldn't it be great if the young men and women that we are talking about to about this thing uh, felt like it was something fun and like celebratory and exciting and it felt like they had freedom to talk about it and ask questions as opposed to having this thing being shrouded in like secrecy and shame and sin because that's the thing sex is sex is like one of the only things where it can be both a celebration and a sin according to the church and that is so confusing let's think about the other things that pastors preach against lying cheating stealing gossiping alcoholism like all of those things are all bad like all the time they are they're never spoken about in a positive light and maybe there's justification for some things you know i'm speaking very broadly but it's like oh is it okay to tell a white lie if you are protecting someone's feelings whatever we can like those are nuanced conversations but in general those things are all spoken about negatively you've never had a pastor come on stage and be like you know what if cocaine just helps you get more things done and you're doing it within the sanctity of your home and within your marriage, it can be a beautiful thing. No pastor's ever going to do that. Like, that's not going to be a thing that happens. But that's what happens when people discuss sex in the church, is it goes from being this sinful, disgusting, shameful thing that ruins your purity and tears, tears your life apart and threatens your salvation to 
it's beautiful and it should be celebrated. So if we could just like change the way that we speak about sex, maybe more people would feel comfortable going into their marriages, being open, asking questions, having really great conversations. And if they do still decide to go to a sex therapist or still think that that's something that would benefit them, that's amazing. But we could also like help people feel more comfortable entering into their adulthood and into intimate relationships and romantic relationships. So that way, it's not just like, I am completely lost and I have nowhere to go. Like, I don't feel comfortable talking to any of my friends or my family about this. So, you know, immediately I'm going to go to a sex therapist. You know, just wouldn't it be great if we changed the way the conversations happened to make people feel more comfortable and open and willing to talk to each other so that young people who are in the church and who are going to be entering into marriages and don't have any experience with what this is like, feel like it's okay to talk about and ask questions and they can get help from people that they know and they can get advice from people that they know before they're in the situation where they're just like, I'm very lost and very overwhelmed and this is all really confusing to me. Yeah. What do you think? Like, I feel like you know, I personally know I have friends who like would not have conversations about sex with yeah. me at all. Like they will not open up. And it's again, it's not like I want details or I want to <laughs> share details, but it's like, let's just like yeah. check in on each other. I think that's really good to have a community of women that you can check in and and your husband can have a community of men that they can check in on each other and like encourage one another oh baby (laughs) um and like i don't know how would you like one if you're watching the video version of this bethany just picked up her baby just like the little duck fluff on the back of her head her hair is so cute and do you have that type of community and how did you find it um have you had to be the one who kind of like initiates those conversations with friends and how does it go? Because I think, you know, some friends that I'm like, man, I want to like have these conversations, but I have no idea. Bring it up. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, totally. I, so I have one friend in particular who she, um, we've been friends for a long time, like from when we were single and all of that, but she, her and her husband have both been in super respectful, like honoring ways have been so positive about their marriage. So positive about like sex and especially as women, you know, like, I mean, we see on Instagram so much, like, it's like, oh, like all he wants is sex and I'm tired at the end of the day. Like, oh, you know, it's like, okay, well, do you think we're ever going to make any progress if we always talk about how terrible it is, you know, like, yeah, it might be hard, but we need to, you know, get help. Um, yeah. And so I have one friend who is super positive and I'm sorry. What did she just say? It might be hard, but we need to get help. What? What does that mean? I'm, I'm very confused on what that implies. She basically, she, um, has just like made herself a resource and made herself available just by sharing little snippets. And I guess seeing if I'm receptive to those conversations and I am, cause I really appreciate that. Um, but the idea that I loved that they shared in that podcast that I think would be so cool is to even like invite a group of women to do like maybe to work through they I know all of on Francie's podcast there are different people that have courses that have books um like there's a book um I can't remember it's one of Francie's favorites it's <laughs> something about like your orgasmic potential something oh, like yeah. that I can't remember it. Oh, I'll have to link it but imagine like I don't know what if like you initiated and invited like a group of close girlfriends like hey like maybe even just like two or three or four and said, what if we did a book study through this for the purpose of really talking through and encouraging and helping one another in this area, like super private, super, um, like this isn't like a big public, you know, conversation where we're going to all share each other where you're struggling or where you're hoping to improve. Um, and I, you know, I think it'd be cool to see like, Oh, who is receptive to that? Who wants this? And then who doesn't? And it might give some idea of like, you know, how to actually go there. Um, Um, I was doing that with, when I was in a young marriage group, I had started to initiate, um, passion, passionate pursuit, uh, passion pursuit, something like that by, um, Julie Slattery and another person. And then like COVID hit. So we couldn't do it. This was like two years ago, but it was cool to see how much interest there was in that book and basically how to become like super great lovers. Um, and so I think it takes like, like one bold 
person being willing to put themselves out there. Um, because I like think when we talk about it on here and when we talk about it, like, I don't know, like with people who are open to it, it's like, wow, people really do want to talk about it. So I don't know. I think it just takes people like the people that are on this watching and like you Morgan and me to be bold and to make it less of this, like, Oh, this is so awkward. This is so weird. Like, no, why can we talk about every other area of life? But when it comes to this, we have to just figure it out on our own or we just have to struggle silently or we just have to like wonder, am I the only one? And that's so sad. So yeah. I don't know what are, are, are your friends? Do you have friends that are open about it? Like, do you have like a community like that? Definitely. I definitely have like, it's crazy to me that Bethany and Dave have only been married for like four years. For some reason in my head, it was longer than that because I'm just like, my brain is reeling. I'm like, she already has two kids. They've been married for four years. She puts out this 150 questions to like make sure you're keeping connected with your spouse and like puts their relationship out there like it is just the pinnacle of what a biblical and godly marriage should look like. Because let me tell you, I've been married for seven years and some change and there is no world in which I would consider myself like any in any sort of position to be giving advice on marriage or like putting a pdf out there of how to have a good marriage that is just wild for some reason i thought it was longer a few very close friends that like we'll have conversations we'll recommend books or recommend certain things that uh whatever like we've tried or liked or whatever but like you should try this (laughs) or whatever yeah um and yeah, I mean, I think that's so beneficial. And it's like when we're struggling, like we have some close friends who called us up and just said, Hey, we're struggling. We don't know, like what's, we don't know how to communicate this. Can yeah. you help us talk through it? And it was like, wow, like we were so honored that they called us <laughs> up and wanted to talk about that. But yeah, I think that that's so important. Like there, I just know there are so many men and women out there closing themselves up in their marriage and not talking about this with close godly friends. and. I liked what Dr. Glenn in the podcast mentioned of just like, you know, there's one song of songs. Like I I'm going to have to do more research, but he like mentioned song of songs is like a group of people talking about. And I was like, like, wait, what? Hold up. (laughs) And he was like, some of those people were single people actually. And like, I just thought that was super interesting. And again, like I have to really look into that, but yeah, I was just like, man, like why aren't there, you know, godly couples sitting down and talking with one another. So yeah, anyone on here, I just want to encourage you guys, you know, whether you have to be the bold person or you have someone that, you know, would be willing to have these conversations, like talk about it. It's good. It's fruitful. It's beneficial. It doesn't have to be this secretive thing or dirty thing. We're like, Oh, no one's allowed to know. Um, yeah. I mean, this, this, I think this, irrelevant but it would be very fascinating if there was um like a source that they could provide and I know that Morgan said she would look further into it so she's not the one making this claim um but if Song of Songs was written by like a a collective if it was a collective you know compilation of literature by multiple people and some of them were single and they were talking about sex and that's included in the bible like obviously Song of Songs is about sex like it's a very uh lustful chapter in the bible um maybe lustful is not the right word well yeah it is lustful erotic it's sex centric we'll say that but um like i said in the beginning it's generally believed and accepted that song of songs was written by solomon and so i think it adds so much more depth and fascination if it was a group collective and i don't know i'm with morgan i'm gonna have to look into that we're going to have to see what's, what's the tea with that. I've like spit up all over me now. Um, <laughs> this part of the conversation I think is the, like, even when it comes to talking about sex and all of that, even with one of my really good friends, I, I still felt like when it came to, and this may be like, you know, sometimes the words we use are like shocking to people. Like, how can you say that? But really when it comes to like women having an orgasm, I feel like that is oftentimes a struggle and it can, or it can be confusing. Um, and you might feel like I'm broken or this is so difficult. And, um, but I think women just feel so uncomfortable talking about that. And it can just be like, it can make sex not as fun. Cause you're like, well, 
this is, it's great. Like I enjoy it, but I'm just not experiencing this like, wow, amazing. And I've had so many women who have DM'd me and said like, I've never even experienced that. Where do I go, you know, from here? What, you know, and I yeah. found when well, I was newly wed, like that. trying to figure all that out, it's like, it is a journey and it is, you know, learning your body and him learning you too, figuring out for you how to get there. Um, and I remember feeling like that was the one thing that I felt like I didn't really have many people to talk about it with. And it just felt like if I brought it up, which I did a few times, that it was very vague and kind of like, I didn't really know where to go or how to talk about that. And I didn't really know the resources. Mm -hmm. um, and even books like Intended for Pleasure, it was just like, I don't know. They just felt like, kind of like they made you feel like, wow, everyone is just like, you know, at a hundred and they're just crushing it from day one. And if you are not crushing it from day one, like something's wrong with you. And I just felt like, oh my goodness, like this is, I want to figure this out, you know? And so I really appreciate how Francie um, has opened up that conversation so much and has specifically recommended resources on that um, because I have so appreciated growing in that area and have seen how much more um, enjoyable sex can be when you start to understand your body and understand how you can help yourself get there and um, how you can do things ahead of time to help yourself. And so uh, yeah. I would just, I would just love to see more women, um, not just like talking about it all the time, but really helping each other specifically in that area. And I really do think a lot of this, like when it comes to like, okay, whatever, if it's pole dancing or lap dancing or whatever, if you view it from this perspective of this is a way to even help me like enter more into sensuality that God has given me, mm -hmm. those sorts of things actually help you on this journey of like having more pleasure in intimacy. Um, the more you just view it as something for him or, okay, this is, you know, intimacy is just kind of like a man's need. The, you know, the harder it is going to be for you to really experience pleasure. So um, I just think some like we as women, especially, need to view ourselves as more like confident sexual beings and that mindset alone that freedom alone will help you like okay I was trying to let her finish but I just I have this thought and I need to get it out so um a lot of times in religious spaces women figuring out what they like and women like being comfortable with their own bodies and exploring their own bodies to understand what they like sexually is considered a sin for a lot of people or it's if it even if it's not explicitly a sin it's like it's frowned upon because your pleasure should be coming from your husband however if you don't know what you like how is he supposed to know what you like if you can't explicitly say like this feels good. This feels bad. If you don't feel comfortable even with your own body by yourself, how are you going to feel comfortable being intimate with someone else? Like, I don't think that you can. And so I think it's very important to explore that and be comfortable with that. And, you know, even if it's not comfortable at first to consider those things or to take part in figuring out what you like, it is really, really important to do so. Also, I know this is totally not the point, but I am so distracted by the fact that Bethany is holding her baby and talking about experiencing pleasure and intimacy. Like, I know that her child is a literal newborn and has no concept of what is being said, has no idea what's going on. It's highly distracting to me. Maybe it's just me, but I'm just like, uh, Big Dave couldn't have taken both of the children for this chat so you weren't, you weren't talking about orgasms while holding your baby on an Instagram live. I think if this were a private conversation between the two of them, that would be one thing. Um, but like doing it on a live in public, people are weird. You never know what somebody's going to do or, or think when they see children on the internet. So I don't know. It makes me uncomfy. Achieve some of these like experiences that you probably really want to have. So I think all of this ties into, I don't know, like some of the issues a lot of us experience in marriage. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm trying to like speak plain without like just shocking everyone's ears 24 seven. <laughs> that's good, that's good. You're finding the balance. <laughs> no, it's really good. Yeah, I agree. And I think just the, 
yeah, I like the idea of the lap dances and like learning and like someone messaged me was like I want to take a class but I have YouTube some videos on how to give a good lap dance because I know that my husband would appreciate it and I think it will make me just more confident in who I am as a woman and I'm like yes that's great like do things that make you more confident in your body and I listened to a different episode of hers and she was interviewing some woman who just said like uh you know I think like we've been trained as a society to like women to view themselves and their privates I won't use words right now (laughs) Um, but as like kind of ugly or just like whatever and it's like wait a second like God designed this like anything God designed beautiful and like to really start to retrain your brain of like no i don't know that I agree with that that women have been trained to view like their sexual organs as ugly if anything from what I've seen it's objectifying those you know parts of women and and women in general Um, and it's like these things are so desired that it almost doesn't even matter who they're attached to like it doesn't matter who those body parts belong to because they're they're just objectified and they're like dehumanized or impersonalized from the woman as a whole. So eh. <laughs> Hulk could have two meetings. Sorry. Yeah, that was a good laugh. Maybe I'm just slap happy. <laughs> I am beautiful. Every part of me yeah. is beautiful. And my husband thinks that I'm beautiful. Like, why would I not? And like that even just like retraining your brain to think that like can make sex that much more enjoyable. And I think that that is so true and so good and something that I've had to personally work in. And so, yeah, I just, I don't also, know, also, I'm not trying to invalidate what Morgan is saying here about her personal experience, but if women are like conditioned and trained to believe that certain parts of them are ugly, why are those the exact same parts that we are told to cover up all the time? Because if we don't, we're going to cause other people to like lust after us and and lure them into sin. That ain't adding up to me. It's a process though of having to work through it all. (laughs) Well, and I I like the um, the point you made, I think it was on your stories. Like there, every relationship is in a different place. And so if you are in a place where like you or your husband, or you have a history of um, sexual addiction or pornography or, a past history of being in clubs or whatever. It's like you, it's important to um, have wisdom, you know, like we, um, we do come from different places. So if you're like, wow, I, you know, my husband has struggled with pornography. Is this going to be like a trigger for him? It's like, have those conversations together, talk about it and seek out wisdom from like a godly older couple or reach out to like, you know, a really trusted therapist and, and have those conversations. Cause you don't just want to if there is a specific struggle or a past history of something, it's important to be wise. Um, yeah. But she's frozen. Is it me or is it her? Or is it no, her? I can see you. Maybe I'm frozen. Oh, no. Am I back? Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, you're back. <laughs> so anyway, all I was just saying, I appreciated how you pointed that out. Like, it's good to have like open conversation and to be wise and to seek out wisdom. Um, and even like asking your husband, like you might like, maybe you're like, Oh, he would never like that. My husband would never want me to do that. Like, have you asked him and not like in a degrading way, like you wouldn't want this, right? No, no good man would want this, Right. Like, but be like, Hey, like, you know, throw it out there as a really positive, like, Hey, what do you think about, you know, like, um, this whole idea of, you know, you can talk about it like a really good group of girlfriends or even me just like looking up online just with like a female instructor. Would you like that, you know, and you present it in a really. Why is this the example that's been used? Every time they've given an example of like doing something wild and crazy to make yourself feel sexy over the past 30 minutes. Like, let's let's pick on some other things that could be tactics that people could do that women could do to make themselves feel better and feel sexy and like feel good and confident. I feel like they've both listened to this podcast. I've never heard of it before, but um, 
Francia is is the host. Like they both picked up on this podcast and now they're fixated on this one specific thing from that one specific episode. Like let's expand. Let's open up the floodgates. What are some other things that your husband might be interested in or that you might want to try out or experience, right? Like let's, let's get it flowing. Fun way. Like see what he says, you know, yes. um, because yes. you might think you know what he thinks, but you might be surprised as well. Yeah. It's very interesting because I got several responses and I posted one of like a girl saying that my husband, let's see, I think I saved it. Cause I just thought we should talk about it, <laughs> but she said unnecessary in my opinion to do the lessons or whatever. I don't even think my husband would want me to try being like a stripper for him. I already turn him on when I'm in sweatpants being silly. No worries about being sexy enough here. And then I, like shared and said have you ever asked him though because if he thinks you're sexy in sweats he's yeah. gonna really lose his mind if you're put on some lingerie and start dancing around him. <laughs> it's so true oh my God. I know I I saw a couple comments like that and I don't know I just I think that like I get the like oh yeah he said he already thinks I'm so sexy but I've even heard you know, like women say like, well, we're, you know, eventually we're just gonna, you know, get naked and jump in. So why do we, why do we even need some of this other stuff or whatever? But it's like, it's like, I'm saying like the, like the, the tension that you create and the beauty that you create when you're like, okay, you're not doing everything. You're like creating that, like, oh, we want each other more and more like, oh, you're so sexy. You're so hot. Even throughout the day, you know, flirting, um, building that excitement, it actually like really helps make the time that you actually are like physically together so much more exciting and passionate because you've been building like your body up for this, like, oh, yeah. this is going to be so awesome. And, you know, in dating, there's often so much tension because you're like, okay, you can, you, whatever boundaries you have, you might hold hands, you might kiss, but you like, don't go past a certain point. And so you're just like overflowing of passion for this person. And then you get married and you're like, great no more boundaries, nothing. And you kind of lose that tension. And you're like, why do we lose that excitement for each other? So in some ways it's like, we need to figure out ways to bring that tension back and bring that excitement back. Because it's like, I think that's just so fun and so beautiful. So if you're like, we don't even have that in our marriage, maybe start doing some of these things where you have some of this teasing and flirting, but you kind of stop there sometimes. And it's almost like it leaves you wanting more, but you don't always get more. And it's like, it'll kind of bring that back in. So I don't know. That's, that's yeah. something important oh definitely I think that's okay. super important well I posted or I, I don't really have much to add to that other than I find it kind of odd that Morgan would post that girl's response of being like oh well he already like finds me sexy in sweatpants when I'm being silly so we're good and she would be like well have you asked him though because imagine how much better it could be like what if who are you to talk about somebody else's relationship like who are you to talk about their intimacy within their relationship if this girl is like no I, I wouldn't do that because I don't feel that it's necessary I feel confident and we have a good time and everything's great let her be let her be happy you don't gotta be like but have you asked him because imagine how much better he could like you if you did that like some people don't like that. Some people are, are uncomfortable, not even because of like religious reasons, but just because it's like, eh, you know, everybody has their own thing that they like. And so if what makes this person's intimate relationship work is being comfy, being goofy, being silly, great. Let them enjoy themselves. <laughs> like you don't need to force people to like move out of their comfort zone if they don't see a reason to do that or if they know that like I, I get the whole point of like going outside of your comfort zone is to test if you would like something even if it makes you uncomfortable but if they're like I just I'm not interested in that I don't like it let them be I think we posted on the Paul and Morgan Instagram recently, but there was this guy talking on a podcast and he was saying, when you're dating, the devil says, take your clothes off, take your clothes off, take your clothes off. And when you're married, he's, the devil says, keep your clothes on, keep your clothes on, keep your clothes on. And like, that's so true. Like Satan doesn't want you having enjoyable, beautiful sex. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> he like tries to ruin it because it ruins marriages. And 
Yeah. I'm just like, we have to bring that tension in that we had before marriage and we have to bring that excitement in. It should be exciting so often, like <laughs> maybe every time. I don't know. But obviously there are going to be some times it's like, all right, we got to get this done. <laughs> but most of well, I feel like it depends. I was about to go off on a rant. So I'm like, let me pull myself back, right? Like, let's be fair. If you both agree, like, hey, let's just have a quickie. Okay, yeah, like, let's just go get this done. However, if you're like, okay, well, let's just get this done because your partner really wants to have sex and you don't, no, I don't think that's an expectation of, like, that's how sex is sometimes. Like, you're just like, okay, whatever, you know, do whatever you want to me and and let's get this over with. That makes me highly uncomfortable. But if she's referring to, like, both of you agreeing to, to have a quickie because you have somewhere to go or whatever... Okay. If that's the case, okay. If it's the other scenario where you are just like putting up with it because it's what your partner wants and it it doesn't feel good to you even a little bit or you're not like happy to be engaging in that and you're just like, okay, well, let me, you know, grin my teeth and bear it. That's not okay. You, You don't have to do that. You should not be expected to do that. It's time. You can make okay so you're like a veteran (laughs) so (laughs) i don't know if seven years of marriage is veteran status because in the grand scheme of things seven years is it's not that long of a time like it's it's a first grader it's really not that massive of an amount of time you know it's it's still significant and it's seven years of marriage and of making a relationship work and that's amazing but there's still a lot to learn at seven years of marriage, especially when you get married young, like Morgan did and like I did. I got married very young. And so um, when you get married very young and you've only been married seven years, there's still a lot to learn. There's a lot of wisdom to gain from other people. What would you say are like, is there are like a step if it's like, okay, I maybe someone's like, I can't imagine jumping into like learning how to pole dance or lap dance or striptease or whatever like you having been married for seven years, what would you say are some like simple steps that you can take to start moving into the direction of being like more sensual, more seductive and feeling more confident in that? I think it's fun to have makeout sessions because like, you know, how often are you making out with your spouse and like stopping it there? Kind of like you said, building that tension. Like that's just like one simple thing to do with your spouse is like get on the couch and be like, we're going to make out. Yeah. And then whether your husband knows it or not, you stop. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, I'll see you upstairs in an yeah. hour. <laughs> totally. You know, little totally things not. like okay, that I think done. are you're just out. so fun. And, and I think like for the woman making out and then like stopping and being like, okay, I'll see you in an hour upstairs. Like seeing the desire in your husband's eyes is it kind of yeah. like sparks that, oh, oh I'm sexy yeah. and you want me. Yeah. And this is great. <laughs> that confidence builds that up. Uh, yeah. So I oh, think like- that's one thing. What's one? That's a fine tip. If that's what you like and that works for you. Totally great. I don't see an issue with that. My initial thought, though, when uh, Bethany asked that question, though, was, well, how do you perceive your role in a marriage? Like, what do you perceive your sexual role to be? Because I think evaluating that would be the first step to um, starting to feel more confident and being open to exploring more. Because if you just think like, well, I am just here to, um, in terms of like, sexual intimacy. I'm just here to please my spouse and I'm just here to, you know, just be available whenever they want me. You're going to have a very hard time being motivated to do things that make you feel more confident and make you feel more sensual because you don't feel like that's your place. Like you, you don't see the necessity in it or the value in doing that thing. And so that would be like, first and foremost, the number one thing that I would say to do is to really consider how you feel about intimacy in your relationship and whether or not you um, are like viewing yourself as an equal part in this or if you're saying like well his desires trump mine like whatever he wants goes 
or because because we're talking about traditional Christian marriages. So if you are on the, you know, Lexi James train where your husband didn't marry you to take walks and watch Netflix, he married you to have sex with you, you might not even see why it could be important to feel excited and to explore and to try new things and to do what you like and to understand what you like and what makes you feel good. So that was like the first thought that popped into my head. And a thing that you would give? Um, I think that, yeah, I, just in my, like my own experience and in talking to other, like, um, like either engaged or newlywed couples, because I talk about it a lot. So people will start coming to me like these newlyweds. And I'm like, I mean, I'll talk about anything. Even my sister, Rebecca, she's so sweet. She just got married. And like her and I literally will talk about absolutely everything. And it's so great. But I (laughs) think that it's like, I kind of said earlier, like, especially as a newlywed couple, for whatever reason, when it comes to, you know, sex toys or like how sexy can you be? There's always this, like, is this okay? Or, you know, my husband would love to like, I've said this before, but like a simple example, he would really like to do oral, but I just don't feel comfortable with it. It's like, Mm -hmm. I think we, especially in the, as women, especially as, you know, in the first few years of marriage, need to ask ourselves like, why do we keep asking what's okay and what's not okay? And why do we keep putting like these limits and these barriers? Are they grounded? Is this like a conviction and something real or just something we've made up? So my thing would be to really encourage, especially in the first few years of marriage, or if you have like a random conviction or boundary to ask yourself, like, where is this coming from? And why do I feel? Where is it coming from? Why do I feel like that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe because so many people are conditioned to feel confused and ashamed about sex and not be comfortable in it and not be confident in it. Maybe that would be why. I'm not like getting mad at Bethany or like, you know, trying to bash her for what she's saying, but it's like the answer is quite obvious. Why do young men and women feel like certain totally normal, healthy things like oral sex or using a toy or certain positions are not okay within the confines of their marriage because they've been conditioned to view sex as dirty, unclean, impure, sinful. And so that's the conditioning that they have had their entire life up to this point where suddenly they're married and they're supposed to flip a switch that everything's okay. And it's confusing and it makes you feel awkward and it makes you feel embarrassed and it makes you feel ashamed. Like that, that's the obvious conclusion to me. That's the correlation. That's why people feel like that. That's why there's the issue. It's because they've been told that the concept of sex is dirty their entire lives. And now it's supposed to be this pure, beautiful, enjoyable thing. And they can't bridge that gap. They can't flip that switch. Because it's really difficult to understand something to be one thing for your entire life. And then to one day, because you signed a piece of paper, you said some vows, you ate some cake, to expect it to be completely different. I need to limit my sensuality, limit my eroticism with my husband. Like, why can't I just be free here and say, hey, if this is beneficial to both of us and it doesn't directly go against scripture, you know, we're not bringing someone else into our marriage. We're not having sex outside marriage, the basics, you know, but like, if this is beneficial and my husband enjoys this and I, you know, there really isn't anything wrong with it. Like, why don't I push myself a little to try some of these things, um, and try to participate in that. So that would just be my encouragement and something that I have grown in even like, wait, why do I think like, why do I have a question about that? Like he likes this. I like this what's the problem? Like, where am I getting this random rule from? Or why do I have like this random, like, is this okay? Like, who's deciding, you know, like this is just crazy. So that would be something that really encourage women to do is just to like, be willing to be willing to push themselves a little bit, be willing to try some things that you think are just, Oh no, like off limits. Like maybe we need to get into the off limits a little bit more. Like, you know, in the, like I said, not things that are against the Bible. Common sense things. Yeah. Like, let's not go so far as bringing someone else into the marriage. I think that's common yeah. sense of like, no, we've gone too far here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but- like the obvious, like you're not bringing someone else in, you're not bringing pornography and you're not listening to the world and asking like, oh, what are things that are helpful? They have often a lot of terrible advice. Like, you know, like here's how to spice that. But like, no, 
the reason that oftentimes, um, you know, like the forbidden or whatever. I was going to make a snarky comment. And if you're watching the video version of this, you saw my face, but I'm going to let it slide and we're just going to keep moving. It seems so great is because it's that off limits, that tension. So it's so much of what we're talking about is like, make yourself uncomfortable a little bit. Like do those things that make you like, Ooh, is this okay? You know, it's like, that can be really fun and bring like a lot of excitement to marriage. And you might realize like, Hey, this actually is really fun. Like, it's not just his thing. Like I can bring a lot. And also I think husbands really enjoy when you ask for certain things, you know, like, I mean, oh, Dave yeah. always thinks it's really great when I'm like, I want this or I want that. He's like, Ooh, I like that. You know, like you're so confident and you just know what you want, you know? And I'm like, okay. You know? And so yes. even though sometimes I might feel dumb or like, I'm such a weirdo or like, I feel like I look stupid. I'm like, he thinks it's so great. So I would just encourage you to challenge yourself maybe and be like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to ask for something or I'm going to kind of like throw him off a little and be like, Hey, I want you to do this or I want to try this. So. Yeah, I love that. I think that's such good advice. And yeah, like I think it would be very helpful if she could give specific examples. And I understand why she might not want to um, like give an example of like asking for this or asking for that because it is related to her marriage. And so um, maybe she's not comfortable like sharing the specifics, but she could give some examples that aren't directly related to things that she has asked for. Because again, we're talking about how there's a lot of shame and secrecy and not being open. And this, like this particular segment is very vague. Like they're really not giving a lot of detail to help the people who are watching this here. Agreed. Our husbands think we're, we're way sexier than we think we are. Like I'm always surprised by like when I do something like the smallest little thing and Paul was like, that was so sexy. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Oh my goodness. So funny. Well, I don't want to keep you much longer. I think that this has been an amazing conversation and we need to do this again for sure. Um, I'm looking through my notes real fast because I saved a few like screenshots yeah. just to double check to see if we should go over any of these things that people mentioned in my question box. Um, <laughs> okay, so this one's interesting. And I've heard people say this. Um, this girl said not sure about like doing the class or learning how to give a sexy lap dance. Um, even in marriage, we're not supposed to have our husbands lusting after us. And I'm like, hmm, is that even possible? Like lusting, is your husband ever lusting over you? Like, I don't even know if that's a thing. I don't know. What, what do you think when I read that? Yeah. I guess if some women are thinking like, Oh, I mean, if you're in a marriage where you really don't feel like he cares about you at all and you're feeling like he's just in it for himself um, and right. he doesn't, I would say if that's really how you feel like your marriage is, then that's a good sign that you need to reach out and get help. Like, don't stay in that place. Reach out and get counseling or reach out, you know, to a godly older couple, like, you know, because that that's maybe what, you know, in that particular situation, you could be like, it's not there isn't any mutuality here. It's mm -hmm. just like one-sided and I really don't think, he, you know, feel loved. I feel used, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's, that's serious. And you do need to seek out help for that. Um, but I think viewing, you know, like whether you have the higher drive or he has the higher drive, like viewing your differences, viewing just your, what you both can bring to the table as really exciting and kind of fueling that desire instead of viewing it as a bad thing. Instead of being like, Oh, all, you know, all he thinks about it and all he wants is, you know, sex. Like, well, you know, maybe try like enjoying it more and giving it more. Maybe he's like a small starving man in the desert, you know, like, you know, like maybe try entering into it more and you'll actually see, like, I get why he wants this so much. Like it's actually really awesome, you know, um, because yeah. our thoughts do directly fuel our emotions and our feelings. So if you're constantly thinking like, this isn't even that great, or I'm exhausted. Um, I love how Francie talks about like, this can actually be very life giving for the man and the woman. And yeah. I think so much of like this stereotype of women with the low drive, it's because we haven't really experienced all that intimacy is supposed to be and all that sex is supposed to be. And so I think, um, you know, taking time to really learn and taking time to really challenge yourself and to grow, you might start to see like that desire and how it can actually be so beautiful. And you might find yourself on the side of like, Hey, 
I actually want you. Like I'm the one initiating rather than always <laughs> responding or being like, not tonight, you know? Um, so that's kind of like a tangent, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I hate to like categorize men and women different, but it's like women have kind of given themselves this reputation and you see it all over the internet of just being like less desiring. And I think we just are perpetuating that problem by giving into it rather than going like, no, I, okay, naturally I might not feel like I'm desiring, but I can change that and I'm going to do what it takes to heal my hormones and, you know, think differently so that I can become a really sensual erotic woman. And Francie, if you are not listening to heaven in your home, Francie Winslow's podcast, like go to the beginning, start there because you really can become this kind of woman. And you really, I truly believe you can get the help or get the healing physically, emotionally, mentally to get to the point where you are the one that's like really desiring and wanting to go after your man. Yes. <laughs> I'm like stuck on stupid. Cause she said maybe her husband's like a small starving man in the desert. I don't even know where that came from, but it threw me off entirely. Regardless of that, I think it would be really valuable for the person who left that comment to try and analyze what they're actually saying. Because in Christianity, whenever the term lust is used, it's almost always in a negative way. It's almost always like related to and closely associated with sin. But when you consider the definition of lust and like what that word means, it, it typically is just like a, a sexual desire towards someone. And so if you're feeling sexual desire towards your spouse or your partner, are you not then like lusting after them? But because you are married, again, related to this conversation, is it a bad thing? Is it bad to lust after your spouse? I don't think so. And again, intimacy, in my opinion, is supposed to be enjoyable for the people who are involved in it, not for just one person. So what would be so terrible about exploring different ways to make that intimate relationship even more exciting? I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, just I think everything you said was great. And I agree with the, the lusting stuff. I think like the one like scenario that I can think of, yeah, is just like if your husband is only desiring you to please himself and then like throwing you to the side, like that's a major issue and you yeah. all need to get help. Um, but if your husband wants you and is like, I want to be with you, I want to please you, I want to learn what pleases you, like that's not lusting, that is love, that's a deep yeah. desire for yeah. you. You need to appreciate that and enjoy it and go with him, like you said, enter in and like really learn how to enjoy this. I think it's like sex just it takes work and yeah. educating yourself and like learning totally. one another and separately and like it's not just this thing that you can just be like, All right, we're gonna do this and then be done <laughs> with it and like, hello, you've got the rest of your life with this yeah. person. Like make it be fun. <laughs> So yeah, I think I think we gotta start looking at it like I'm gonna learn more about myself and my husband uh, and what tickles his whatever. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and uh, we'll we'll go with it. <laughs> okay. Do you have like a specific favorite resource or like I know everyone listening, they're gonna be like, okay, so where what can I do next? Like I got this conversation, I don't know what the next step is. Like what would you say would be a good next step? <sighs> well. Oh, go follow Bethany Veal and go follow Francie and her podcast, Heaven in Your Home. Like, I mean, I'm honestly really just starting to find more resources yeah. on my own. Like, I got to say, Paul is much more the like, I'm going to learn more about this and like, figure out how to please my wife and take care of her and I'm like I'm just gonna wing it and I'm like no I need to like figure this out like like granted I'm a talented gal but like, <laughs> education doesn't hurt <laughs> and so Good yeah, Morgan. I love that I'm, confidence. I'm gonna keep learning um so that oh yeah someone just co commented sex chat for Christian wives podcast yes. is great that's one that I've been wanting to check out for sure yeah they're yeah. What would you say, Bethany, is your kind of go-to resource yeah. or encourage women to check out? Um, there, there's a couple. I mean, obviously, Francie's podcast, Heaven in Your Home, I think is like the best place to start. Um, and yeah. really just starting 
beginning is so, so great. Um, I have found like the more that I've started to um, listen to podcasts, read books, actually invest into learning and figuring this out more and more for myself. Like the more I have, like I've enjoyed it in the past, but the more I realized how much potential and how much like, it's just like an ever, like there's no end, you know, like there's just so much more always. And as you grow in your relationship, it's just like amazing. So um, I would just really encourage you to know, like, even if you feel like, wow, we have the best sex ever. If you keep growing and learning probably in five years, you'll be like, oh, we were, we were doing like, this is even more amazing. You know, I just think that, you know, it's kind of like, this is a dumb analogy, but it's like our relationship with God. It's not like we get to the point where it's like, it's perfect. You know, like right. God is, perfect. we can always grow until we're like perfected in heaven with him. So I think intimacy is like one of the deepest relationships. And it, it it's like one of the, you know, the ways you can know someone the most closely. And so I think it's like a never ending journey. And so just yeah. starting learning and growing, um, it also like brings it to your, the forefront of your mind. Like I was listening to a podcast yesterday. Um, it was on the sex chats and it was all about flirting. And it was like, you know, I've, I've probably kind of been slacking in this area. And it made me, it was like, it made me think like, oh, I need to go like, you know, trap some moves and try some flirting, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it, it like brings these things to your mind. So yeah. I think and it like kind of like, Ooh, like I actually, I want to have someone I can like try this with, you know? So I just think like getting excited and then digging into these resources can be like just helpful to make it. Top of mind. Audrey. Hey. <laughs> yes. That's like, so good. <laughs> oh, baby. Yeah. I have no hope mom. You're going to embarrass me the rest of my life with all these conversations. <laughs> yeah. Luca is in the same. Um, <laughs> never know with this um, conversation. Oh, you yeah. never know. That's so funny. <laughs> I love it. Um, well, for those of you guys asking in the comments, I will share some of the resources in my stories. Yeah. And Bethany, yeah. if you have a chance yeah. to share those, it'd be great. So you guys can go check out her stories. Um, but yeah, Bethany, thank you so much for doing this. This was awesome. <laughs> Having me on it's been so fun and i'll share the will you post the live after so we can yeah. share it definitely it. yes well, i don't accidentally delete it <laughs> okay. Okay. all right thank you guys for joining maybe next time i know we didn't get to really get to any of the comments uh, or you guys commenting in here but um maybe next time we will attempt to do more comment reading and q a style um but this is really fun and i hope to bring at some point francie i asked her if she would come on and do a chat with me and she said yes so we will definitely be doing that soon um this was so much fun you guys and i will post some resources and i will post some resources that i don't agree with and that i think you should not look into but oh. uh i will share some that i think are super beneficial and y'all should check out thank you guys for being bold and brave and watching this live and chit chatting with us i think that it is so such a blessing to our minds, our marriage, and just the future of our marriage as well. So yeah, you guys are great. Love you all. Hope you have a great, what's today? Tuesday? Tuesday. Oh, Valentine's Day. It's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. All right. Love you guys. Bye. Okay. Well, that was interesting. I wouldn't say that I agree with every point that they each made. However, I do feel pleasantly surprised by that conversation. And also, Morgan, if you're looking for Christian women to talk about sex with, um, I'm available. My Instagram is inside the honeycomb. So just feel free to hit me up. Like, I'm sure you would love to hear my thoughts and my opinions on the matter. So just let me know. That is all I have for this video. Obviously, as their video was going, I gave my comments throughout. And so I don't really have much more to add um, other than I would just like to reiterate that I think it's really great to start having these conversations, but it might be more helpful to um, give specific examples and, and get more in depth with the things that they're saying, because it did feel like they just listened to one or two specific episodes of that podcast and then that's what they went on and instead of trying to build more on it it was just like oh yeah the pole dancing class like 
no, 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 let's talk about it a little bit more. So I would have appreciated that. But other than that, I, I honestly feel like that was a good start. And that could be a good, um, like starting point for people who watch Morgan and Bethany to start thinking about like, well, maybe it's okay for me to explore more. Maybe it's okay for me to ask questions. And so if it does that for somebody, then that is amazing. And I want to hear your thoughts, all of them, the good, the bad, the ugly. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave those in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, if you would consider liking this video or subscribing to my channel, that would be incredible. And if you're listening to the podcast, it would be so amazing if you could leave me a rating and or a review like that would be truly awesome because I do not have very many ratings and ratings would help the podcast grow. So, you know, they would be cool. If you would consider doing that, I would really appreciate it. And if you have done any of those things already, thank you so much. I'm so appreciative of you and I love being able to just sit here, hang out with you and talk about whatever. Thank you so much for watching. Please be kind to people and I will see you in the next one. Bye.